this women's day in change makers we bring to you two game changing innovations by these women innovators we as women do not spare even a slight thought on where those sanitary pads end up after we dispose them off well there is one young girl named vaishnavi anand who has given it a thought and came up with an innovative solution for the same another major concern waste management has always been a pressing issue in the country an innovator named hafila has addressed this issue and developed an innovation called hack biodigester there has been no better time to celebrate women power in the realm of innovation and startups today women are playing a leading role in making our lives better through their innovative ideas in today's edition of change makers we have two women who came up with superlative ideas and went on to be the winners of national innovation contest they are vaishnavi anand and hafila hairon to begin with i would like to invite vaishnavi an innovator who has given a serious start to the women hygiene and came up with the solution that is also environmentally sustainable let's hear it from the person herself i welcome the innovator vaishnavi anand for this edition vaishnavi let us start by knowing all about your innovation hi thank you so much for having me here uh my innovation is called swachhan swachhan in sanskrit means skin uh swachhan is a, uh, an organic sanitary napkin which is low cost 100% biodegradable and it is made with absolutely zero harmful chemicals it is in fact highly absorbent it can absorb nearly 40 ml of blood how does it, this innovation help solve the existing problem uh if i talk about the problem the problem as such has quite a few components the first component is uh in india nearly 48 to 52% of the menstruating women use the uh, menstrual devices most of it being sanitary pads now every day in india 34.1 million pads are just disposed or thrown out and mind you this is only the 48 to 52% so before and with the increasing awareness more and more women are actually using menstrual products which is a very good thing but before 100% of the menstruating women start using pads or other menstrual devices we need to find a solution to this problem now why is uh, this a problem it's a problem because every day um there are about 34 million pads and each pad takes about 1000 years to degrade and this results in landfill uh pads come under biomedical waste and according to the laws and regulation biomedical waste has to be incinerated incineration is basically a burning process inside a closed chamber but on incineration that is on burning these most of the pads because of the numerous amount of plastics in them release a lot of cancer causing toxins again polluting the air the third component of the problem is uh pads most of the pads cause a lot of itchiness and rashes during periods there's a common uh, notion that i've heard through my surveys is that uh, itchiness and rashes is because of periods if you have periods you'll have itchiness but that's actually a extremely wrong notion it is because of the chemicals in pads that we have itchiness and rashes swachhan happens to be a low cost organic sanitary napkin organic itself means there are no chemicals in it and it's 100% biodegradable so in case even by mistake it ends up in one of the landfills it's not going to be there for 1000 years on incineration it does not release uh, cancer causing toxins we have solutions in the market which are organic pads but organic pads are very expensive in india swachhan is targeted at making it economically friendly as well apart from being environmentally friendly yeah that's really interesting vaishnavi as you said 34 million sanitary pads are disposed of every day this is a huge amount of waste also women face a lot of issue when it comes to sanitary pads so please tell us how customer friendly these eco friendly sanitary napkins are 
so as I previously mentioned, um, most of the inorganic fats cause a lot of itchiness and rashes, and this is because of the chemicals present. Swachan does not have any sort of bleaching agents or any sort of chemicals because of which there will be absolutely no itchiness or rashes. Moreover, organic, any organic product has a very low shelf life. I have addressed that problem. I have addressed it in a way that I can increase the shelf life at least by a little, which allows me to sell organic fats on brick and mortar, which makes it more accessible to women who are more comfortable in going to the store and picking up their own napkins. That's this is how I've addressed it. Yeah, them. that's great. And uh, Vaishnavi, what inspired you to come up with this innovative product idea? Uh, actually, when I was in class 8, uh, Kiran Majumda Shah happened to come to my school. And uh, she is an alumni of my school. So when I read about her, I started reading about how she set up Biocon. That inspired me a lot. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew for sure that I wanted to do something with entrepreneurship, I wanted to become an entrepreneur, I wanted to have my own startup. And time and again, that thought has always been there. So uh, one day while I was uh, returning back from college, my mom was telling me, sharing with me this article she read in the newspaper, which spoke about how uh, most of the sanitary pads take thousand years to degrade, and how one pad is as good as four pads, to, uh, four plastic bags. And I majored in environmental science. So I was like, okay, let me just try doing something, you know, try something innovative, try something, try to make a prototype. And there I was that night uh, preparing my first prototype. While the motivation began with my mom, many a time through the journey I felt like, you know, quitting because there were multiple things I had to juggle with college, exams, records, practicals. Uh, it was my father who every day, constantly would come and ask me, what is happening with the pad project? What are you doing? How are you proceeding? Are you proceeding? In fact, I learned a lot about finance and business from him. That's great to know the support from your family, your parents. Uh, what is your take on increasing role of a woman in the world of startup and entrepreneurship? Uh, very frankly, I think we belong to a land where women have always been entrepreneurs. You know, women have always been a part of uh, making a charge and offer at home and selling it. They, it has been selling, making their own articles and selling, tailoring, selling cow dung cakes, selling, um, selling various other articles. In fact, I remember my mom telling me, uh, of, for a few years, they stayed in uh, Bihar. Uh, and this was before, 2000, before 2001, somewhere in the 1990s, they were in Bihar. And uh, there used to be a mela allotted only for women entrepreneurs, where women would come and they would sell products that they have made. In fact, she, would, she was also telling me there were these women who had their own gardens or their lawns, and they would sell small planters, they would sell pots, they would sell plants. So women have always been a part of it. But yes, today I think the encouragement from families, from the government is way more. And this encouragement really has been increasing the number of women into entrepreneurship more than ever. Great, great. So women are being empowered and uh, they are going ahead in the entrepreneurship journey also. Uh, Vaishnavi, what are the challenges that you faced during the course of your journey as an entrepreneur? Uh, I think before the journey of entrepreneurship, I started my journey as an innovator, which itself uh, was quite a challenge. Firstly, I think this is a challenge most uh, researchers or innovators face is lack of resources. I started my product, uh, I started making my product in my kitchen. Uh, even today, I make my prototypes in my kitchen. Yeah, I just have a little more sophisticated machines right now, but it still happens in my very own house. And when I started off in the kitchen, uh, I didn't have a lab, so we cannot procure certain chemicals that we need. Uh, I had to find homemade alternatives to each of it. But the plus point was that I could make it cost efficient because all of these other alternatives that I found were just available 
everywhere. So that helped me make it cost effective. So even though it was a challenge, it it ended up being beneficial. And uh, the other most important issue I had was I started off when I was in my first year of college. I hadn't even completed my first semester. So I had absolute lack of knowledge. I did not know a lot. I didn't know how to research. I didn't know how to read research papers. So it was self-taught. I learned a lot myself. I wish I had known a lot, but I'm very proud that I eventually ended up learning a lot on my own. And these are some things I would probably never forget because I learned on my own. And after that, the, the journey of entrepreneurship began where I had absolutely no idea about finance, marketing, business aspects because I belong to a pure science school and I don't belong to a business family either. So that was a challenge where entrepreneurship was concerned that I didn't know what were the terms. I didn't even know the difference between revenue and profit. And the most important thing is lack of finance. But I'm very glad my parents did help me out a lot in the lack of finance. They did support me financially in making prototypes. So, yeah. Yeah, it's great to know your challenges. Every challenge you face, you will come up with a solution to. Uh, Vaishnavi, uh, you are the one of the National Innovation Contest winner. How did you utilize your funds received from Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell? Were you able to raise uh, fund from other sources too? Uh, so, as I mentioned, I did have a problem with funds. So, uh, when I got the funds from MIT, I did utilize them in for testing, for procuring certain raw materials, for procuring certain components of uh, machines which I couldn't afford. Uh, I also used it for certain travel expenses where I had to, you know, travel to attend um, conferences, startup conferences, or other competitions. Uh, I did use my funds in all of these places. And I was able to raise another grant. Uh, I did get another grant from the Karnataka State Pollution Control Board, uh, which was purely for research. They found my product was a solution to one of the problems that even they were uh, working on that was landfill and waste management. So I received a grant from the Karnataka State Pollution Control Board to develop my product further. That's great. You will uh, impress other innovators, other investors to get funding support also. Other than funding support, how did National Innovation Contest help you in your startup journey? Uh, so, once my product was ready, uh, I I had no idea how to proceed. And that's when people told me, all you have to do is to get an investor. But being from a science background, as I said, I had no idea as to how to go talk to an investor. I didn't know how to make a pitch deck or a presentation. And, uh, and I was actually on a standstill for about two to three months. And then I saw the brochure of National Innovation Contest uh, in our college WhatsApp group. That's when I joined it. And believe it or not, if I see my first presentation that I submitted to the National Innovation Contest and the final presentation for the last round, I can see a difference of hell and heaven. There is so much of difference. E after each round of evaluation, after each round of elimination, we had we had sessions, we had workshops, we had one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions wherein we were taught, we were taught what to do, what is wrong in our presentation, how to improve. In fact, uh, many of the speakers were either subject matter experts or they were startup owners or, and entrepreneurs themselves. They shared their journey, they shared their mistakes with us. You know, sharing a journey is something which is nice to hear, but only when we listen to others' mistakes we realize that, oh, probably I'm making the same mistake. I should correct myself. And that really helped me a lot. And with each round, my presentation just started improving a little by little. And I got the direction as to how to study, where to study, what to study, what terminology I should know. These are the things that National Innovation Contest helped me with. In fact, um, when I met Abhishek sir and Deepan sir in the regional meet, I was astonished. They knew each and every product by the name, the team lead's name. I 
I wouldn't be surprised if they knew our products better than us. Vaishnavi, it's uh, good to know the support you uh, got it from the MIC team. Uh, what message or advice would you want to share with the young entrepreneurs of today? Uh, I myself am a young entrepreneur. I'm still in the journey. And But one thing I've learned throughout my journey is believe in yourself. You know, only when you believe in yourself, you radiate a certain amount of confidence where people start believing in you. A person who probably doesn't even know you, but you, but you have the confidence in yourself, you believe in yourself, automatically that person starts believing in your idea, your concept. And another thing I realized is every idea is a good idea. It just needs the proper implementation. Great. So self-motivation and uh, confident on your idea is an important thing. Uh, Vaishnavi, what are your future goals? Uh, in the current future, I first want to start off mass production um, because that is the most important thing to me right now. I really have plans, I really have hopes that I can fulfill the plans of having Swachan being manufactured by women and transgenders. This is something I really want to do as my contribution to the society. And a slightly long-term goal is to make Swachan so affordable that women in the rural area have access to an economically and environmentally friendly solution to their serious. Great Vaishnavi and I, uh, I wish all the very best to achieve your goals. And uh, Vaishnavi, how has the product been received? Uh, can you share with us any awards or recognition that you have got? Uh, awards? I wouldn't say I have a line of awards. But firstly, one of my most prized possessions is the National Innovation Contest 2020, the award of the NIC 2020. Because I have never been a topper and you know, I've always heard this thing that, oh my god, you should study well, you should get a sentence. Not being a topper and you know, having, get, receiving a grant, winning a National Innovation Contest really boosted my confidence. And um, in fact, last year on Women's Day, my college, uh, NCC, they facilitated my product because um, it was a solution for most women. And yeah, so Women's Day 2022, I was uh, felicitated. Also, in the Ministry of Education Regional Meet conducted in Bangalore by Reva University, I was uh, awarded the Innovative Startup. Apart from this, I received uh, quite, a, quite a bit of recognition, which I would say to me it is recognition, wherein uh, colleges wanted me to come and talk to their students because they thought I was a student and I could relate to their students better than them calling uh, someone the students couldn't relate to. I, I don't know, but they called me. And uh, so I went to Jyoti Nevas College, which happens to be a women's college, to talk and share my journey. I was called for various awareness programs to talk about menstrual hygiene, to talk about um, reproductive cycles. And recently I was called by St. Clarence College in Bangalore to um, uh, St. Clarence College to talk to their management students about my journey and how even a science student can really uh, get into business. Yeah, that is the true spirit because everyone thinks that only the uh, technical students can do some uh, magic in startup. It's not like that. So you are the better example and uh, everyone will follow you. On Women's Day 2023 also, we would like to acknowledge your contribution and hail your achievement. Thank you Vaishnavi for being with us. Thank you very much for having me here. Our next innovator is Hafila Hairun, who has worked on the pressing issue of waste management and has developed a one-stop solution for all the problems related to public sanitation. I would like to welcome Hafila, innovator of Hack Biodigester. Welcome Hafila. We are very keen to know about your innovation. Please enlighten us. Sure ma'am. Like before I get into my innovation, imagine uh, if you are having a long trip with your family members or friends, suddenly you wanted to use the restroom which is along the roadside. Do you think you or your friends can use it without any hesitation, especially for
for women and children? Absolutely not. Because the main factor which prevents us from using such toilets would be the improper waste management, poor sanitation, as well as lack of electricity. So keeping all these problems in our mind has led to this innovation hack biodigester. Our innovation hack biodigester ensures proper waste management, sanitation, safety and security, as well as eradicates manual scavenging. This hack biodigester would definitely be a revolution in the biodigester markets. So this is what our innovation it is planning to offer safe, secure and sanitized toilets to the public toilet users. Yeah, improper drainage system and waste management have always been areas of concern in every locality and city. So, how did you address and solve this problem through this hack biodigester? Yes ma'am, like as I said, the problems which prevents the public toilet users to use such toilets are the poor waste management, improper sanitation, lack of electricity. These factors really kindled us and most importantly, uh, the waste which are being generated from the toilets are just directed to the water bodies without any proper treatment. So when people consume that, they are prone to various kinds of diseases. So this is the major issue which we thought it needs to be addressed. And that's how we came up with our innovation, Hack Biodigester, which offers a one-stop solution to all these problems by offering a safe, secure and sanitized public toilets. Um, like... We are using the, the, actually our innovation has an integration of two technologies which is nothing but aerobic digestion and microbial fuel cell where we can treat the waste, onset treatment of the waste is assured and in addition to that, uh, like electricity is being generated which can be used to light up the toilets and uh, the, the treated water, that is the treated waste water which is being generated is disinfected. So, you, because of this disinfection, this, this treated water can definitely be, be used for the flushing purposes of the toilet. So from the waste, we are generating electricity. The, our innovation produces uh, disinfected water which can be used to flush up the toilets. And most importantly, another advantage of our innovation is we are also generating compost which can be used as a fertilizer in agriculture. So these are the trio advantages which have been achieved through our innovation in addition to offering proper waste management. So you are solving many uh, problems through your innovation. What inspired or motivated you to come up with this innovation, Hafila? Yes ma'am, actually the problem like the question which I asked you right in the beginning is yes. what is it's actually uh, the uh, the scenario which we experienced, my friends, me and my friends were also the uh, members of the this hack by digester company. We were actually on a trip to Bangalore. At night, we were we were asked to use the toilet which is along the roadside. At that time, neither of us were able to use such toilets. So, like uh, it was it was like it's better to not use the toilets rather than using such public toilets. So. Uh, like this was a major concern and one of my friends fell sick also because of that. So this was in our mind, see how they are maintaining the public toilets, like most of the toilets are in such conditions only. Luckily in our college they held a, uh, held a competition or like for a sustainable development. They asked us to come up with an innovative ideas to offer solutions to this problem. That, uh, that, that time we thought that this this one such issue which needs to be addressed and that's how we came up with the solution initially it was a, just a mere idea we didn't know it would evolve this much but our major concern was to treat them and i would say that this real life experience was a source of motivation to start up this were there any challenges that you faced on the journey of yours as innovator entrepreneur uh, not only me, those who are entering into the entrepreneurship, uh, like they won't get success as such. Like as I said, we also came up with a, just a mere idea. We didn't know that this would evolve that much. To make people believe that this would work really took two years for us. And for two years, literally we faced failures, complete failures. Not even a single success was there in our journey. And the competition which was held in our college, that was the turning point of our life. 
where we started this innovation we presented but still we didn't win it we were all we three were all in the state of mind that we can this is the turning point of our life we are going to go in a way that we are going to win that competition that was in our mind but we had a terrible failure like there was chances that we win but we got failed we literally cried at that moment because we thought that it would be a turning point in our life but it wasn't but uh, after that we evolved like we uh, we attended many competitions where we just go there and explain our idea but still we didn't get recognized so to to change our idea into a complete innovation really took two years and i would not blame that i would i wasn't successful at those time because if i was successful at that competition i i am sure that i wouldn't have evolved this much so those failures those failures which i saw initially which we saw actually which we saw initially like it was for two years i know like but the people surrounding us like our family our friends and our mentors college really supported us they didn't lose hope in us they thought that there was something in this innovation which needs to undergo some modification in order to get a wholesome become a wholesome model like to reach to the public so they had hope in us and because of which we are here today and yeah like we have challenges and it's depends on how we face it we shouldn't be broken down by it it really everyone will face challenges success will not come as such so Similarly, we too had a struggle of two years to come to this stage. It's great that in every failure you may have learned and you have upgraded your product and now you are a successful innovator. Sure. Is there yes. any other similar product as it was available in the market? How does uh, it stand apart from others? Yes, ma'am. Like, yeah, uh, when we came up, like when we said this, the thing was everyone defended that there are products which are available. satisfying this problem like electricity problem sanitation problem everything is being satisfied yes it is being satisfied but there is no such problem like no such innovation till now which can con- like put up all the solutions together and offer a complete whole package solution is not yet available till now like if you want poor like proper sanitation in a uh, toilets and the automatic flushing has to happen along with the disinfectant as well as generation of the electricity and the production of the compost so the three things the three major things are getting produced in one innovation so the existing innovations which are there in the market offers each one of these solutions but there is no such solution which offers a complete package of everything so this is how we put up our technology to like a combination of technologies to solve all the problems with one solution like with one product so this was our It's great that one product addresses three uh, different uh, problems. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Hafila, how did funds that you received from MIC help in your journey? Did you get oh. any other financial support? Actually, uh, from the funds which we received from the MIC, actually we used it to develop a product. Initially, we had a rough prototype. After which, receiving funds from the MIC. like we developed a product which because of which we have completed 70% of the product undergoing r and d and all everything has been done and in addition to that we have filed the patent and it is in the stage of we have published the patent actually we are at the final stage to get granted so only examination stage is pending so for which we are developing the product right now and the third one is we have registered like we are in the process of registering our company as ll lnp we have finished off all the initial proceedings which has to be done for registering as llp and in addition to that we are also at, we also attended many conferences like uh, the startup conferences which are held in different parts of the state like in tamil nadu and we have got insights and thereby and there also we have promoted our product carried out some promotional activities Get, got some target leads for our uh, product and yeah we have as like because using those funds we have carried out this much activities and in addition to that we have also been recognized by our state government and uh, they have uh, we have also received a grant from innovation voucher program and we are also a recipient of tamil nadu student innovator so 2020 It's good that MIC helped you from ideation to the registration of your own LLP. Definitely, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Other than the funding support, how did this national innovation contest help you uh, in your startup journey? Yes, ma'am. Like as I said, 
uh, actually our idea was just a mere idea, a robust idea before coming to NIC. We were only thinking about on how to develop our idea to convert into an innovation, what technology we have to put in to uh, satisfy all the like satisfy all the needs. But when when there was four stages at four stages in national innovation contest, uh, to cross each stage we had so much of paperwork. Like those paperwork constitutes twenty percentage of your innovation and eighty percentage of business like marketing. How are you going to take your innovation to the public? So right at that moment, before entering to the uh, NIC, the thing which we had in our mind is only about innovation. But only after entering into the NIC, we, we thought that this much of work has to be done. Innovation is just 20%. 80% is lies in the hands of marketing. No matter how well you develop your product, if you lack in that marketing aspect, that is where the success of an entrepreneur lies. Just not by building a product and you say that I'm having the product you can come and get. No. Th how the strategies you are evolving to make your product to reach to the target customer is actually a big, big cup of tea when you like when you consider an entrepreneurship. So this I would definitely say that NIC has played a major role. Like it gave us a clear idea of how we are going to take a product to the target customers who are our target customers and how we should make the marketing, how we should develop our marketing aspect. Everything we learned from NIC. By, by crossing each and every stage of NIC, like we developed that, oh, this is what we are lacking, so we didn't know about this. So each and every stage was really, we put in time to fill those papers. And after filling those papers, we had, like, uh, we wanted to get it done in the real life too. So we have to submit the proofs to NIC also. So by doing this, this paperwork only, we got a clear idea of, oh, this is how our innovation will evolve into a company, will evolve into a business. So thanks well, to very NIC. Yeah, Thank Hafila, you. we are very happy to know that uh, National Innovation Contest helped you uh, right from the ide ideator and you have registered the patent. Now you are going to register LLP. From ideator, yes. ideator to entrepreneur uh, through NIC, you have achieved it. We are very happy to know about this. Uh, Hafila, you. what would you advise to the budding entrepreneurs of today? Uh, I would say that never lose hope because there are stages where you will feel that everything is completely like you are completely broken down everything has gone like everything whatever you do is not up to what you expect there are stages where you'll be completely broken down but i would say that never lose hope uh, never lose hope never lose faith in god as well as yourself your team members and you should be in a mind that you should have that positive though you are uh, feeling low though you are feeling low you should have that instinct within yourself that there is success after every hardship after every effort there will definitely be a success and i would like to stress one quote here uh, maybe you will not be knowing because this is what we will say among us within our team members that success without hard work gives you glory success without hard work gives you glory success on hard work gives you stages to speak about your success stories. So this is one such incident which is happening to us right now. And after so much of hard work only, we have got stages to speak about our innovation, to speak about our journey. So definitely the budding entrepreneurs too will get many stages to speak about their journey. Only if they have the perseverance to go into it, like to put their efforts, to, to have those hard work and I would definitely see perseverance. Perseverance is what will lead you to this success. Though failures come, have those perseverance. That is what my advice. What are your aspirations and goals with this innovation of yours? Yes, ma'am. Like as I said before, currently we have developed a 70% of our product and it has to undergo some R&D after which we will install it in our college. And after this, Actually, before itself, we have communicated with our municipality and the corporation of Trichirapalli, Tamil Nadu, where they have asked us to come up with a report of frequent monitoring after installation of our project in our college. So once it is done, we will get the report of six months. We will approach the municipality, and they have uh, they have they are really they really like their idea actually. So they said that once it is working properly within six months, those six months report 
uh, if you submit, if we submit it to them, they said that they will give a particular locality in Uyagonda and Trichirapalli where there are community toilets and they can, they have asked us to install our product in that particular locality. So currently our aim is to get generate a report uh, out of, a uh, report for the performance of our product after which we will uh, approach the municipality to install it in community toilets. And also we have got leads from, by attending various conferences, we have noted it down. They too have asked us to uh, get ready with the product. Once the uh, final validation is completed, we will enter into the market. Yeah, it's good to know that you have already customer to validate your uh, product. And uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, you will be validating uh, your product successfully in Trichy and uh, your product will spread to other cities as well. Uh, Hafila, how has the uh, world around you responded to your innovation in terms of acceptance and appreciation? Actually, the world around me was really supportive. For me, the world around me is my, uh, to start with, it is my family members. They, because they have to accept first whether this idea works or not. My family members, my team's family members, our college, and then comes the state, and then comes the country. So I have to satisfy all their needs. First, I have to satisfy the needs of my surroundings, after which I can little bit explore to the wider one. So initially, when I came up with the idea, so what they said was, lot of uh, thoughts were there, because it's already existing, what you are what is there different in it. So to make people believe and make people appreciate our uh, innovation took a lot of time. And I would say that we have satisfied all their uh, uh, like all their requirements, and we have satisfied all their questions which they put up when uh, uh, when we came up with the product. So I would say that everyone uh, initially there were uh, positive criticisms, like to develop the product, even negative criticism. So this is what led to develop our product. But now everyone are appreciating because. Because of those criticisms, only we developed our product, and now the fully furnished product is receiving lots of uh, appreciation from our state government also. So they have uh, rec like they have recognized our product, and they have considered us as a recipient of Tamil Nadu Student Innovator. And I would definitely say that they are uh, giving us so much of help and support. Even they visited our college recently to evaluate our product, how it is working. So everything, they are appreciating our efforts. So I would definitely say the environment and the world is so supportive and so appreciative when it comes to our innovation. Yeah, thank you, Hafila. We wish you will get uh, the support and the uh, acceptance in future also. You will receive many more awards. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing your success stories with us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. I hope the innovators like Vaishnavi and Hafila would continue to inspire the coming generations and motivate them to work for the betterment of society. We will continue to engage with such bright minds in our subsequent editions of Changemakers. Till then, keep watching for this space. Goodbye.